but one of the main things that people ask about is, uh, where's my tracking tool? Okay, so they're, they're just used to coming in and they go to tools, um, they go to tracking, and they go to tracking, and I just want to see information uh, of, of a surface here. And so as I move my cursor around, I see I have my northing, easting, elevation, the slope. So we're getting, you know, we're getting information on the fly as we're moving around. I've got my point lock set, so I'm, I'm snapping the points here along this um, along this geometry for what it's doing tracking. So I could go in here and I can turn that point snap off. So I can track along and I can dynamically see everything that's going on. Okay, we have our tracking dialog up here. So wh where's that in Open Roads Desire? You know, it's just we just want to do a quick analysis of, of our of our data there. So if I jump over here into OpenOS Designer now, we can do the same thing by using some of our analysis tools. So for our terrain models, um, these some of these commands are located in multiple places. So I know I'm, I want to do tracking on my terrain. So I'm going to come into my terrain tab. And I want to go to this analyze or this analysis section. And if I do analyze point, I can come out here. I can pick my surface. And it, as you see, as I track along, I get the same types of information. It's displaying graphical data. It's displaying that graphical triangle for this surface or for this terrain model. And it's giving me a slope arrow. Uh, but it's giving me my elevation, my slope, and my aspect um, as I move along. Uh, you can see it's not on the heads up display, but in the in the parameters here, I am getting northern, I'm getting X, Y uh, positions. I'm getting the elevation slope aspect. So it's still giving me all that information on the fly as I move around. So. Um, so that's just kind of one of those quick things for for surfaces, how how we do that analysis. One of the other questions we get would be. Um, and I used to have this isopack surface command, so I, I could compare my ex my proposed surface to my existing surface, and I need to see the elevation differences of those. Okay, so as I jump back here, I'm going to jump back to select series two, and we would have under the um, design surface, we could go down to the generate isopack surface and run this command that gives us information on on our differences between our surfaces. So I'll just create a separate surface here and I'll have it triangulate. So I'm just gonna run my first surface is my original, my second surface is proposed, and it's going to create that isopack surface. And that isopack surface is the difference in elevation between my two surfaces. So you can see it gives me, gives me um, gives me my elevation differences and those elevation differences are only stored in that isopack surface and then we could use our isopack surface to do things like um like gen generating a single contour to so show where my zero elevations are where my two surfaces cross uh, i can run volumes uh, i can run just different analysis on these dtm files back in open roads designer now uh, we have a very similar command that's going to give us the same type of output, and that's now called a delta terrain. So under the terrain models, if I want to create a delta terrain, so I could come and create a delta, and very similar heads-up display here, where we're going to do a terrain model to terrain model. We can locate our terrains that we have loaded so on my first train is going to be my existing my set my second train is going to be one of my uh, my other terrain models that's created from my corridors and then i can give it a feature definition and give it a name and we'll just give this a oops, jumped off the screen there i'll just turn on uh triangles for this one And then I'm just going to data click through and accept all my options because I don't really need any offsets or anything like that. It's going to go through and it's going to process and create a delta terrain. Okay, that delta terrain is a difference, the difference between two terrain models. 
Okay. So can't really see much, right? But one thing that I kind of skipped over before I mentioned that, that I was going to go through some interface. We're going to kind of show how we used to see it in inroads versus how we see it now. So that information now is all getting stored in this design file. Okay. So back in inroads where we would have where we'd have this explorer window and, and we go through these tabs and it gives us what's loaded inside of the program. In open roads, we're going to utilize our project explorer. So I can open up my open roads model. I can expand my design file here and I can see what is loaded in this file. So in this one file, I have my alignments. Okay? My geometry is located inside of this DGN file. My terrain models are located inside of this DGN. My corridors are located in it and they're, they're filtered or they're, they're grouped out based on the feature definition. So I have this, this isopack or this delta terrain that I created that was named ET is now inside of this model. Okay. My existing surface is actually coming from a reference model. Okay. So I have that referenced into this file. So I can come down here in my project explorer. I can expand my reference models. I can see all the DGN files that I have referenced in. I can expand those and see what information is coming from that reference. So my existing terrain that I use for my delta surface is located in this reference. I can see all that information. Okay, so it's not necessarily independent files. I'm sorry, these are indep not independent uh, DTM files, but they're actually DGNs that have the information in it. Okay. Um, one of the other questions that we kind of get has to do with, with geometry. So, um, we do have a transpose command. Okay. So the, the transpose command is kind of one of those commands that people will come into open roads design and they'll, they'll lay out a geometry and, and, or they'll import uh, a graphic or they'll, they'll do something to create the horizontal alignment. And they realize I, I, I did it backwards um, and it actually needs to go in the other direction or they make a copy of a command because they have a northbound and a southbound and they actually want to change the direction so they can change their, their stationing. Okay. Back in inroads, that was done by the transpose command. We actually have the same option here inside of open roads designer. So under geometry, it is a little tricky for this one because if you come in a horizontal, you go to modify and it's called transpose element. Okay. We are working with not just independent elements, but my geometry here is a complex element. My geometry is not located in this file, so I'm not going to run the command. But this transpose element will work on a, a complex element. It will work on a complex horizontal. So if I run the transpose command, it's going to create a copy of my geometry, and it's going to be in the opposite direction. Okay, so that's one, one thing that is new with OpenOS Designer is with inroads, when you do the transpose, it just flipped your one alignment. You still have one alignment. Open Rose Designer, we, we're going to maintain that original element. We're going to create a duplicate or a copy of that and, and reverse that, uh, which the original can be deleted, uh, but it just it keeps that original information there. Kind of sticking along the same lines of geometry. Uh, one, another question we have uh, is with profiles. Back in inroads, I would I would come in and I would come and have horizontal geometry and then I would have vertical geometry. I would come into evaluation profile. I would create my profile. I would do all my design inside that profile window. Open Rose Designer is very similar, but instead of creating this physical profile in the plan of the design file, we actually have profile models. So our profile views. So every element that you see can have a profile view. It can have its horizontal element information. And then we create our vertical or our profile onto that. So if I come in and open up, which I have a profile view here. So I have my center line is opened up. I have a profile. This is the same thing as doing a profile. So if I want to utilize anything inside of this you know, or do any design, it's done on this element. Or I'm sorry, it's done in this view. I go in, I create my vertical geometry, I place my my lines, my my parabolas, complex that, set it active. Once I set that 
when I set that active, it actually will create a 3D element because it's now has our, our 2D aspect with our horizontal, and then we create our profile. Okay, so one of the questions we get with, with the vertical geometry is, um, and it kind of ties in with inroads as well, but uh, with the drape surface command. So I, I've got a 2D element, and I need to know the elevations, or I want to associate the elevations of that surface that I have to that line. Okay, so if I just have some feature that's placed out here, and I'm just placing horizontal geometry, it can actually just be a 2D, uh, a 2D element. It can be a 2D line stream. I'm going to open my profile model of this. And you'll see that we actually don't have, we won't have any physical vertical information inside of that profile model. But we do get our surface. Okay, so what I want to do is I want this horizontal, I want the elevations of this element to be the surface elevations. So I can come in geometry, go into profile creation, and I can do a quick profile from surface. So I'm going to locate my reference surface and then reset to end that. And that's, and since I had this element selected, it should create a quick profile. Let me just select that again. Let me select the element and then let me select my surface. So it should create a vertical profile for that element that is tied to the existing ground. And once that is created and tied to the existing ground, if there's any modifications to the terrain model, that profile for this horizontal is going to change as well because it's, it's dynamically linked to the terrain because it was created from that surface. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.